Hello! This video is going to be day two, part two of the estate sale that I went to recently. Uh, estate sales for the year 2021 have just been insane as far as inventory goes and this one was no different. I do have an addendum to uh, my last video, my first estate sale video, which I will link up above if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, because I forgot a bag, uh, a bag had gotten put with the day two bags and I forgot to show you, even though I showed you the item in the video, I showed both items in the video, I just forgot to actually show you the items. So I'm going to rectify that now. So the first one I did mention for getting, showing you, which is this cast iron, good luck trivet. It's a little bit crunchy, but you know. As a reseller, you just call that patina and people will still buy it. Uh, I can roughly get this much for it. And then the second item I showed in the video while I was showing all the books, but I didn't tell you I bought it. And that's these. It's a beautiful pair of mid-century bronze antelope bookends. I pay $10 for these. so. I paid like $54 or $56 or something like that for everything I bought on the first day, but I didn't include these two items in that account. So I paid like cost averaging like $4 a piece for everything. So very happy about that. Very happy about these. I definitely like picking up uh, vintage bronze pieces. And I've done very well with mid-century modern, which, uh, I will show you some more of in a little bit. But first, clothes. Uh, I did find some clothes besides the two pieces that I had already showed you. Wait, did I show you those? Did I forget to show you the clothes I got too? I did. What? Hold on. I did forget to show you <laughs> the clothing that I bought in the first day. You can definitely tell I am very sleep deprived, which is part of why this video is not on an odd day, is because of the fact of my insomnia and uh, my night terrors and nightmares are back and I have not been sleeping. Which is also why you've been seeing me like double and triple packed underneath my eyes as far as bags go. Yeah, I bought two pieces of clothing uh, and I found the receipt with the clothing. So I paid in total on the first day $58 for everything. Cool. Wow. <laughs> All right. So I bought this 80s romper. Definitely at the Hyder Jazzer size, but this is a very sexy romper. It has this uh, mesh cut out here where the decolletage goes. Uh, I think there's an insert here. Yeah, there's an insert here, so it doesn't go all the way, right? Or that would be extra sexy. This is a size 5 by Amy's Place. And this was shown in the video, but I didn't show that I bought it. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so I got a vintage jumper. And then I have this beautiful... Like... Housewives outfit. I still I'm I still haven't looked everywhere to see if it has a union made tag. Of course, as soon as I said something, I find the union made tag. Because of color, so it's the kind of day I'm having. So it is the blue label. This is a union made tag, which means it is from this date. <laughs> but yeah, I also bought these two pieces, and I'm so annoyed. At myself so you get a, an extra extra long haul because I wasn't done with the first haul yet so now I'm going to show you what I bought on the second day the second day I paid $82 even because I filled out the tax paperwork yes I do actually have an official LLC that is heroin BZRB LLC um, so I'm supposed to remember to fill out the tax-free paperwork every time but I don't because I'm me <laughs> So, in total, if you can add 80 plus 60 together, it's 
for everything I've spent here. I haven't been able to go to an estate sale this year and, and not spend over $100. So I bought every single Pyrex lid, flat Pyrex lid. So these are all the 470C lids. Uh, so I can replace the 470C lid that was on the, the Snowflake Pyrex that I bought in the first video that I mentioned. Uh, replace it with one that isn't chipped. So there are two chipped ones and then four not chipped ones. So I can put one of the not chipped ones with that. Uh, even chipped, selling a piece of Pyrex with a lid, chipped or not, is still better than selling it without a lid. Uh, and lids always get broken before the, the bottom piece does. So even just selling lids can be worthwhile. And I paid 50 cents a piece for each of these. So happy about that. But again, we're cost averaging. So at the end, I'll try to maths and give you a cost average for everything for this estate sale. Oh my goodness. And then I found clothes after I found those clothes for the second time because I forgot because I put them with all of my other clothes. They were in a lane chest and it's a whole bunch of Levi's. They're all 3230s. Most of them are 514s. Right now 560 and 550s are having their day, but you know, it's a classic pair of Levi's. And if you're paying $2 for a pair of Levi's, which is what I paid for all of these, it doesn't really matter because these are still a straight leg style. They're just not a loose fit straight leg style. They're just a regular straight leg style. That's what the 514 is, if you did not know. So I have it in this nice dark wash. And you might look at me funny when I show you this one that I that I put. So this is a 559s. And they are still the 3230s, but this is a relaxed straight. And the reason I bought it is because it's the 559 and it's the relaxed straight. But it's also super destroyed. Like it is paint covered. There is a hole. This is wasn't done because some teenager saw it on TikTok and decided to, to do this to a pair of jeans. These are actually the, the man of the house painted in them and got covered like this. So I picked these up because I knew these would sell to some teenager <laughs> or, you know, some just trendy, fashionable person that is not me. So I picked those up again, $2. This one's probably another pair of 514s, but this is a really nice dark wash. Oh, these are 505s. This is a really nice dark wash. This one doesn't feel like it was worn. Like, you know, you can kind of tell when you've been reselling for a while when something has and has not been washed and worn. I feel like these ones went in someone's closet and never got worn. But because I don't know, I'm not gonna mark them with that. But this pair of 505s. These ones have like the fake creasing in them already, which I thought was hilarious. These are another pair of 514s, but these are 3132s with the weird creasing thing. And again, I paid $2 for each of these. And again, I will tell you the cross averaging later. Another beautiful pair of dark wash. These are 514s. These are 3230s. So it was like 3230s or 3130s. So I'm guessing as he got older, he put on an extra inch somewhere as we all do. Unless you're my dad and then you just get tinier and his dad, he just gets tinier, which doesn't bode well for my brother. So this is Levi Strauss signature. So I don't know when this pair of pants was made because I don't know, this is a loose straight and this is 3130. So I don't know about these ones. I'll put it up here, a comp of some such because I've never seen Levi Strauss signature before. But these are a loose straight as well. So I have two pairs of relaxed or loose straight and the rest are just regular straights. Regular straight. I'm just regular straight. Not a super straight, cause ew. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's those. Very happy about those. I'm gonna show you some books uh, because of course I bought more books. If you did not know, I do have a book channel 
if you want me to actually talk more about books, but not necessarily about selling them, but about reading them because I am an avid reader and I will post that up above in a card if you're interested. If you did not know, Jesus sells. So I bought some Jesus. Holy Bible, the King James Version. It's a holy heckin' big Bible. Uh, it does have some issues with the binding. It is uh, nommed up here at the top. Uh, and the binding is coming out. It definitely does need to be re-glued. This, however, has not been written in, so this would normally have marriages and deaths written on the first page, which I find interesting that the marriages are on the same page as the deaths, but, you know, sure. Uh, and I don't know when this is printed. It was printed in Iowa, so Cooper, so if you're watching this, it was printed in your neck of the woods. I have no idea what, what year this was printed in. I cannot find it in this, in this Bible at all. It's just giving me information about where to find certain passages. And not when this Bible was printed. So yeah, I'm guessing just like everything in the else in the house, this is probably from the 50s or 60s. So here's this Bible that was nommed on and not written in. I found a bunch of vintage cookbooks from the 50s, but these are just like the little pamphlet books. Using evaporated milk in family meals, you know, to give it flavor. So, this one, ground, ground meat cookbook, and for thrifty meals from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This one is ripped. But these are all from the 50s which is fun. Here's my receipt, receipt showing that I paid $82 this time. Ray. I picked up these two cookbooks because I just thought it was cool. So they must have at some point, well, they must have, I, I would think at some point they'd gone to Hawaii or like everyone else during the 50s and 60s just got like, the the tiki craze because you know that's what happened because i found trader vic's pacific island cookbook and hawaii cookbook and they both have little tikis on them and i say this to segue into the next thing i'm going to show you which is a bunch of napkin rings a set of six a little Hawaiian hibiscus flower carved tiki napkin holders. These were handcrafted in India and these are from the 60s. So again, I don't know if they actually went to Hawaii because I didn't actually find anything from Hawaii there. I think it might've just been that's what was trendy and cute. So that's what they bought at that time. So another popular motif in the mid-century era was Asian decoration. Because after the United States occupied Japan, part of the, the reconstruction of Japan after that was to just make a bunch of stuff there to try to boost their economy. And so there was a lot of made in Japan stuff in the mid-century time period after. So if you didn't know, made in occupied Japan is, uh, that mark is from 19... 45 to 1951. 1951 when occupation ended is when my grandfather brought my grandmother back to the States because of course he was no longer occupying Japan and uh, he kind of wanted to keep her. So they both moved here. Um, and yeah, so a lot of Asian inspired things or Japanese inspired things in addition to stuff that was made in Japan was very popular mid-century. So we got a pair of fans, bookends. These are also made out of brass. And another thing made in Japan. I don't know why they felt the need to put that on here. It, it says Japan in giant letters on the back. This is cast iron. It's a giant spoon. This was not used for a giant cast iron terrine, although I guess it could be. 
this is more or less uh, used as decoration. This would have just been an original cast iron piece. However, someone has decided to paint it gold. This is not an original gold paint, and the reason I know that is because of the fact they painted over the rust, and it's coming off down here inside, because this was rusted in here. I'm guessing originally this was an outside decoration, which it would have been. This would have been an outside decoration. This would have been something that you would have put, like, let rainwater collect in for the birds to bathe in, or you would have put bird seed in the bottom of this and let the birds eat out of it. This was originally meant to be an outside decoration. Someone decided they didn't want it outside anymore and brought it inside. And to cover up the nasty, nasty, ugly rust, they painted it this gold color. And it is now flaking off down here at the bottom. I'm going to try to close up so you can see. I don't know if you can see it right down there. But yeah, I don't know why I felt so felt the need to give you so much exposition on this cast iron piece. But I will market it as an outside piece that had been painted so because I'm going to I'm going to take it back to its original purpose someone else can just put it in the house and have it where they keep their keys but it's originally meant to be an outside piece all right am I good yes all right so I have two more bags of stuff to show you if you're still here for the hot mess that is this video because I'm all sorts about the sorts okay I went to the garage and that's the reason why I like going on the last day of the state sales is because of the fact that if you go on the last day of the state sales, stuff has been uncovered. So I like going on the first day of the state sales so I can get the good stuff or at least try to get the good stuff. Sometimes I'm not successful depending on if the prices are right or not. And then I like going on the last day because everything's much, much cheaper and some of people and sometimes they'll make deals, which she did for me. Yay. And uh, also stuff gets uncovered because people are like digging and trying as people buy stuff more stuff becomes available because sometimes everything's laid out and it just becomes so much. So I'm in the garage and I found some mid-century <laughs> modern Tupperware. This is not glass. When I when I brought this up she's like oh my god where did you find that? It doesn't it's not priced and then she's like oh it's plastic. It is plastic but it's still vintage atomic plastic. This is Littenware. This is really cool. I think it's really cool. It's pink, but it's like a mauve colored pink. Or I would have asked uh, Victoria if she wanted this, but this is a mauve pink. Also, she doesn't like plastic. She likes doing the glass. So. And then we have some more mid-century this is actually Tupperware. It's branded Tupperware. And it's green, so of course I had to buy it. I actually have really good luck selling vintage Tupperware, and I know uh, Shani Sells also has good luck selling vintage Tupperware, so I like picking it up when it's really cheap, and this was very cheap. So, there's that. I also found, and I think I have a clip showing me finding this in the cabinet, I have an entire set of Vito Bari glassware. So that's the pattern name here, is Vito Bari. These, this shape of glass is a Pilsner shape. These are from the 60s. This is a signed piece. I will try to close up so you can see it. It's right there. It's probably gonna be difficult for you to see. I found an entire set of eight of these Pilsner glasses Sadly, without the caddy, they would have had a caddy, um, so it would have been like a circle, kind of like an oval caddy with the handle in the middle, and all of the glasses were held in this like little claw thing. I'll take a picture right here. If I had the caddy for these Vito Bari glasses, they sell for around, with the caddy, $150 to $175. Because I do not have the caddy, but these fortunately don't have any dishwasher wear. I will repeat again, please do not put your vintage glassware in the dishwasher. It wasn't made for dishwashing. <laughs> it wasn't made for dishwashers. I mean, you do you, but I'm just letting you know your beautiful vintage glassware is no longer going to be beautiful. The, the pattern's going to come right off. So, because I don't have the caddy, I'm going to put this up for 100 and just see what happens. Um, 
I paid $25 for these. You saw them in the video if I was able to pull that up that they were asking 50 and it was half off. So I got these for 25. Definitely think it's worth my time for that. Now, because I was buying so much, this was marked at 20. She gave it to me for five because I asked for it because you know, it's making a deal. This is a very pretty decanter in my opinion. This is, has a nice like marigold carnival glass feel. This just had regular alcohol in it. Um, the cork is a little bit dry rotted. Not bad, just kind of dry. And it's like leaving some chunks in, inside here. But I picked this up because I thought it was beautiful. For $5, these are selling for $20 <laughs> uh, uh, on the various marketplaces. But I thought this was really, really pretty. And some lovely person is going to want this to sit somewhere to just be pretty. Okay, are you still here? I've got one more bag. And this is the heavy bag. Okay. All right. She gave me this for a dollar. It's another mid-century modern piece. I think this is beautiful. I love these very delicate brass birds. Um, I've sold these before. This got a little bit in the bag. But it's okay. It, she had this in here and like an actual candle and I got that too for a dollar. I don't know, I might include it as a freebie with this, but this is originally how it came. It didn't have whatever the heck this is with it. I don't, I don't know what to do with this, so. Uh, to me, I feel like it takes away cause it's blue and this is very warm earthy brass tones and you put a bright blue glass thing in it it just it doesn't look cute to me so I have this for a dollar just chilling on the wall and then I have oh, I almost hit myself in the face with it this is George Jensen design it's just a tankard this is from Denmark this is what they sell for I think I got this for like two dollars or a dollar I don't remember it doesn't matter, I got everything for $82. And we're cost averaging, but this is exceptionally heavy. Like this is something where you would want to have this in your hand when there's a bar fight because you could knock someone out with just the handle. <laughs> it's very heavy. All right, you know I have a great affinity for anchor hawking. So of course I bought some. I bought two of these cobalt blue 10 panel glasses. These are the low ball glasses. And then I bought four of the cobalt blue high ball glasses. These are just heavy. They're really nice. They have a really nice weight to them. The cobalt blue are really pretty. Uh, I have a, a set of eight of the uh, emerald green that I believe Brett sent me that I have. You know what's funny? Brett, you sent, you sent me those, which by the way, again, thank you. And I found a set in my death pile. <laughs> so I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep all of them or if I'm gonna sell the set that I found in my death pile. That's bad when you find stuff that you forgot you had in your death pile. Like I don't, I do not remember buying them. That's how long ago they were. It might not have been something I bought based on where I found it in my death pile. It might have been stuff I pulled out of the hoarder house and then I ended up hoarding. All right, are we at the end yet? No. The answer to that question is no. Okay. All right. Speaking of cobalt blue, but not anchor hogging, I found a cobalt blue Pyrex casserole dish. I do not buy these pieces, these py regular Pyrex pieces that aren't the pattern Pyrex pieces unless they are made in the USA. If they are not made in the USA, I do not buy them because that means they are not vintage. And also collectors 
don't necessarily want them. So, cobalt blue, nice size casserole dish in cobalt blue. I said cobalt blue twice. Again, I'm sleep deprived, please forgive me. I'm making a nest of crap all around me. All right, I think I have two things left. This is another instance in where the state sale lady was like, where did you find that? <laughs> so I found this really pretty vintage cotton fabric. Very, I think this is 80s. This feels like late 70s, early 80s based on the pattern and the color. And the smell. That's definitely been in the garage for a long time. And then the last thing is an Art Deco style pair of bookends. These are just a gorgeous pair of swans in brass. Very heavy. These are, however, not made in the 20s and 30s. These are a pair of Art Deco style brass bookends. And you know that because they're made in Korea. So you can put Art Deco style, but you just need to reiterate that this is in fact not that old. Still old, still vintage, but not antique. So this is the last thing. Am I gonna bother cost averaging all of this? I have to count. I don't wanna count. Can I find my receipt somewhere? Probably not. That thing is probably long heck and gone by now. Hold, please. Okay, I have done maths. With my sleep deprived brain has done maths, so still may be wrong. Paid $140 for everything from both days of the estate sale. In total, I think I have a total of 47 different lots. So like, I'm not going to sell the Vito Bari glasses by themselves. I'm going to, I'm going to share that as, as a lot of eight, just like with the Inker Hawking glasses. So 47 lots, that means my cost average for everything is $2 and 97 cents. There is legitimately no way I cannot make money on every single item if I cost averages out as $2.97. So this is why I love estate sales. This is why I have a giant death pile. And yeah, super happy with my finds. I appreciate y'all giving me some grace here. I, I appreciate y'all watching till the end if you've made it this far in this hot mess video. And I would definitely like to personally thank all 1,610 of my subscribers. Interesting history fact for the year 1,610. Uh, I'm going to give you another Jamestown fact because I do live right near Jamestown, Virginia. Also, I have a degree in history with an emphasis in American archaeology. And we're finally at the time where there is recorded Western history of America. Uh... Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of knowledge in indigenous history, so my sincerest apologize, apologizes, my sincerest apologies for that lack of knowledge. But in 1610, Thomas Gates and the other survivors of the Sea Venture, which wrecked in the Bermudas, finally arrived to Jamestown, again in the year 1610, to see who survived the long starvation of winter. This is the, the tragic, well, yeah, this is the tragic and gruesome history of Jamestown and that there was a very long drawn out winter and the settlers of Jamestown had deteriorated their relationship with the indigenous peoples of the area to where they starved and started to resort to cannibalize each other to survive. So those that survived um, were not what Thomas Gates and the rest of the survivors thought that they were going to find when they landed after surviving their own ordeal, being shipwrecked in the Bermudas. And Thomas Gates had to pass the divine moral and martial law in order to restore order. However, that didn't last very long because uh, he decides to abandon Jamestown in June. So, didn't last very long. But it's a very interesting 
year in uh, American and especially Virginian history if you are interested in looking that up. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this hot mess of a visit video as much as I enjoyed you guys watching it. That sounded weird. Uh, I'm gonna go now. Bye! Bye. Hero, hero, I wanna be a hero, hero.